Hey everyone, this is Penny, Penny and Creations. How are you today? I hope you are having a beautiful day. August the 3rd, 2021. Everyone, I'm going to start this new series on Tuesday. It is going to be Tip Tuesday. I need to find a jingle. Tip Tuesday. TT Tuesday. T Square. I need to work on it. I had to put my hair up in a bow. It's a little too hot for all that stuff hanging down my back. So, let me just say my channel is Penley and Creations because I like crafts. And as you know, craft is a big umbrella. And so many things come under that umbrella. And one of our favorite things is yarn. Whether we crochet, knit with it, make dolls, mug, um, rug mugs, kites. So, so many things you can do with yarn, fashion. And we go down from there. Paper craft. Bee crafts. Um, painting. So it just keep going and going and going. So what I'm saying is that it is not all going to be on your own. It's going to be craft related. So that's what Tip Tuesday is all about. <clears throat> Let me get a drink of water and let's get going. Some of these videos will be short and others will take a little bit of time. Okay. In the process of making... These actually is washcloths. So I have a tip regarding washcloth. This is my art bin. This is a hook and needle nook. I brought this, I would say about three years ago and trying to find something for my crochet hook. It wasn't what I wanted. I know it's a mess, but we'll get to that. Um, but it worked for me at the time, and it still works. I'm not interested in replacing this at the moment. So this is what I brought. And it's, to me, it's more, it always reminded me of something a knitter would use, not a crochet. Crochet, although... The hooks fit in here. And these little scraps of paper. Sometimes I have to write something down and not grab anything. So that's what this is. This glove. I think I was having some friction on my fingers. And I had the glove. Sometimes a needle rubs my finger the wrong way and it's so infrequently that I don't even talk about don't know when it comes up why it comes up and it has nothing to do with one particular needle so it's just strange it doesn't happen that often these little bits right here this is loose yarn that I have been working on for I would say the last week or two and they stay in here until I can put them in this jar. And this is my second one. I need a, another jar. This is actually too full. But this is um, animal crackers, which I always say animal cookies. So I put them in here. And of course, these ends can be used to stuff animals with. So that's the goal. A pillow. Anything. So this is where the loose ends go. 
and I needed this for some reference. Other than that, it's down to something decent you can actually see. This is not the tip, but being that I had to open this. So this is what the case looked like. Now over there on, on the table, I have an overflow of knit needles in a drawer. I have an overflow, but I need to get some number fives um, because they the color is coming off. Something how years ago, um, 80s and the 90s, the color didn't come off. Now all of a sudden it's coming off. So, okay, let's get to the tip, everyone. <clears throat> Pick my I hope you can see. Turn you over. Now that deserves a thumbs down. Making you dizzy. Okay. Let's move right along. Of course it's brown. Not because um, I love browns, because I want to concentrate on some men items. So that's why I am using the dark colors. So I am just, this, let me just get to the end. Okay. And this is where the tip comes in at. Okay. I cannot crochet with my elbow on this desk. It's, it feels awkward. I consider myself a fast crochet, but when I have to go in the stitch, it slows me down. Okay, here we go. Okay. Let me get this pointer out so I can show you what I'm speaking about. Here to find me in the camera okay this is the last stitch okay right no actually it's not we have one more stitch i have one more stitch to make okay before i get to the problem so one more stitch okay now If you look at this and you look at the ends, where am I? Why am I over there? If you look at this and you look at the ends, and if I just give it a stretch, let me pull this back up. Let me bear with me, everyone. Bear with me. I pulled the um pulled the yarn out one piece of the strain out okay let me just make a chain so it'll look a little better okay so if you look at this it kind of looks as if this is finished but we can I can tell because it's um it's usually lopsided, but sometimes, let me fix it. Yeah, that's much better. Now, it's, you'll be able to understand what I'm saying here. Bear with me, everyone. Okay, this is a better example. See how that looks? That looks as if you are finished with that row. It looks, see how nice and even this is? It looks as if you are finished. And although I make washcloth and dishcloth and super scarves a lot, I know without looking that that's another stitch that needs to be dealt with. So... 
a couple of years ago. It didn't happen to me a lot, but I knew it was a stitch there and I did have to, I missed a stitch and I did have to, had to pull it back in order to get the stitch. So what was, what I was doing, I was using, see if I can, okay, I'll just use my, this in here, my tapestry needle. I was using my tapestry needle over here. I'm trying to get this right for you. Okay, I was using my tapestry needle to pull it up so I can make sure that I was not missing a stitch. And what this was doing, I don't want to point this thing at you. This was doing, what this was separating the fibers. That's what it was doing. So I headed to Joanne's and was trying to find something that was pointy that I can lift up the stitch if it was, cause the stitch would sink down and I needed to pull the stitch up. And I was looking for something that I can slide right in there that won't separate the fibers. And what I found was these sticks. And at the time, I had no idea what they were for. Years ago, I learned that it um, had something to do with knit. But they were perfect for me because they had the pointed end. And it wasn't that expensive. I don't even think they were $2.00. And of course I had some type of uh, a discount. So, and I, when I saw, I said, that's perfect. That's exactly what I need because the tapestry needle was separating my fibers. So if for some reason that I'm not sure if this is a stitch still over there because I can't count past 10, so I'm not gonna count to 34, which is what the stitches is on this washcloth. Then I'll take this double pointed needle and I'll just go to the edge and I'll slide it, slide it in. Bear with me. Where am I at with this camera? And I can see. Okay. I can see backwards. I'll slide it in at the end, and there goes the stitch. And how do you know it's a stitch? Because you can see the V. Let's see if you can, I can pick up that V. <laughs> I don't know if it's because it's dark or what. If I get too close, it'll get blurry. See, you can, you can see the V now. So we know that that V is a stitch. It's not a chain. It's a stitch. And that's what I mean by it seemed to fall down. So you won't notice until you put two more rolls in, in your washcloth. You won't notice that it's off until you turn around a couple of times in your project. And you'll notice that this. It's not matching up with the rest of them. So you'll pull it back. So to prevent you from pulling your stitches back, if you're not sure if that's a stitch, find something that you can put in that last piece and you can pull it up and you'll say, that's the stitch, that's an extra stitch that I have to crochet in. So, because it's just sitting down in there. So you have to pull it up and crochet in it. Turn and proceed with the pattern. I just want to go down a couple of stitches. It's 
kind of warm up here. No one turned on the air because it was 60 some degrees last night. Okay. So now we see flush. Yeah. So the edges is nice. Very nice. See? So if you're not sure, find something you can stick in that last hole that's not going to break up the fiber so you can lift the stitch up and then you don't have to pull out two rows because you will not be able to see until you get to the second or third row and then you're going to see that wonkiness. Both of your ends is not going to be as pretty. So next time you at Joanne's, Consider getting some of these if you don't already have them or find something in the house that you can use to pull up that last stitch. If you're not sure, check it and save yourself some time. And being that this my I am, it's supposed to be a tip, but this is still in the process of me doing making a uh, washcloth. So, I notice a lot of patterns. Of course, you know, you always have to start out with a, a chain to, to get to anything as far as crocheting is concerned, unless you doing the other stitch. That's something different. Many people ask you to make the chain and then you start your stitches in the chain, okay, into the front of the chain. Start your stitches. Many instructors on YouTube, okay. So let's just do the double crochet so we can see this stuff, okay. So you, you can see this stuff. I haven't did this way in such a long time. It's hard for me to get it going in here. Actually, because my chain is tight, because I normally crochet my chain tight. Okay, hold it, hold it. We're almost there. One, I think I have one more so I can show you. Oh, that was a good one. That was a really good one. I'm going to show you what the example is. You know, see, that was a good example. Oh, did I make this too tight? Yeah, this is a good example. Perfect example. So when you crochet in the chain in the front, this is what happens. See these big holes? Yeah, you can see that one right there the first two is pretty good it means they're consistent with the gauge pretty good but as i proceed down you're going to notice that you're going to start getting these big holes mm -hmm. and normally when you look at your foundation row that first row most of the time it's wonky looking and that's the reason. A lot of times I can actually get that thing to look nice because I know that it's going to be wonky no matter what I do. So sometimes I can concentrate on it. I can start with a bigger hook like this is a five. I can start with a six chain and then come in with a five crochet hook and that'll take care of getting those big holes. So. My suggestion, my tip is to turn your work around. What's the reptile? So if you turn your work around, you will see, why do I keep putting this back? It's just a habit. So I have to keep digging in here, making that noise. On the back, you'll see these bumps. Bump, 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 bump. Reptile going down. And those are the stitches that I'm suggesting that you work with. And you will always have a 
professional foundation chain. Now, I'm going to tell you something right now. For me, it's slow when I first start because the stitches are tight to get into the first, I call it the bump. And if you're new to this, it'll be a little bit annoying. Okay, so right here, that's a bump. Okay, hold it, thing. See, and of course, this this would get in the way. Why would you do that? Okay, let me turn it back around. And that's a bump right there, and that's where your crochet hook go in. Now, the first one, like I said, is going to be a little difficult to see or to crochet in. So you want to take your crochet hook and bring it in as much as possible. You can't do it around here because there's no way you're going to be able to get into that stitch. So you're going to bring it down as much as possible and you're going to go right into the bump. And it's going to be difficult to get into. If you are using, this is a Susan Bates, a clover hook, it may be a little time consuming because that's a flat head. You need something pointy to get to this. So that's why we love the crochet hooks we use but we also need to use the crochet hooks that we don't love because they have each crochet hook design is designed for usage so the susan base is the design to get into tight stitches that's why they have a pointy head so although this is a susan base and it's still a little difficult to get in here i have to take my fingernail and I have to guide it a little bit over the head and make sure I don't split the yarn, which is what I did. Okay, so this process is never fast. The first one is never fast for me, although I've been doing this for a while. Now, let me try another one because it's not coming up the way I want it to come up. So as I was saying, that the first one is gonna be a little difficult to get in. You may have to use your nails. But what you will see after you do the first one or two, the bumps, The bumps, as I affectionately refer to it, they will start popping up. They will pop up, boom, 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 boom. And you will be able to pick them out really easily. And you'll be able to say, okay, that's the stitch I need to go into to, to do whatever stitch that you, you're making. Uh, uh, a single crochet, a half double crochet. And they'll all start popping up like rectile. One, two, three. They'll all pop up. You'll be able to see it. Now, like I said, the first one is going to be a little too difficult because you can't hardly see it. But once you get to the, once you crochet in the first one, the next ones, they'll pop up. Now, as far as going into them fast, not me. I don't. Um, especially with this one being that. I crocheted the chain so tight. Yep, that's what I did. So I have to have my nail help me. Okay. Started with a single crochet. Now I'm with a double crochet. Make up your mind. What are you going to use? Okay, bear with me one second. Yeah, that's what I did. Crochet too tight. It's not. It normally don't take me this long. Um. Come on, baby. You're making me look bad. 
this is a habit i keep putting it in there because that's what i do so it don't wind up on the floor somewhere why is i hear people complaining when they on a live things don't work out but this is not a live this is tape okay hold on come on why are you take this doesn't take this long everyone it doesn't i don't want you to say oh i'm not doing that it doesn't take this long just i just crochet the chain too tight that's that's just it okay i'm not gonna bore you with more of that so what i should have did is I should have kept that other chain without taking it apart. Now, if you remember how we had the loops at the bottom here when we were going into those stitches, when we were going into the front of the stitch, this is the front, blurry. That's the front. We were going into the front. And remember we had those holes down? Now, this is going into the back bump. Look at that. Look at that. No holes nowhere. The other one, we didn't have a hole at the first stitch, but we had a hole at the second and third. You will never have a hole on this one. And your work will always look nice. And the professionals who have their degrees in this, they normally say, Go into the back. Do not go in the front. I don't care what project you're working on, whether it's a scarf, a washcloth, a sweater, a hat. This is not written in stone. You do not have to go into the front. You can always go into the back and you will achieve whatever pattern you're working on. If the instructor is telling you to go into the chain, that's okay. You can go into the back. It's still going to be the same, but your work will most likely be neater. Now, that person's work may be neat as far as going in the front of the chain, but they may not know how to manage the chain. And I doubt it because the chain in the front always become loose and you're always going to have that hole because the crochet hook splits the chain. It splits it. See, when it goes in there, it splits it open. So you're going to always have that hole gap. And you don't want that in your work. You, It'll always be tight like this. So try it. Try going into the back. And all once you go in the first or second one, the bumps start lining up. And you don't have to guess where the stitch is. And if you're not sure, take something pointy and lift it up. And you'll say, yep, that's exactly where it's at. It's only one piece there, so you can't miss it. See? And then go to the next one, and the next one, the next one, the next one. Mm, your work will look so much better. Okay, everyone. That is Tip Tuesday. Took a little bit longer on this tip. So, going forward. I'm going to try and keep them short. But this one, I did two tips because it um, has something to do to washcloth. Enjoy your day. Talk to you soon. Bye.